All right, welcome class. We're going to start a new lesson here today. Um, our lesson is about strings. I know we're going to skip around. We were in lesson four and five, and now we're skipping to ten with um, strings right here. As you can see, we're going to talk about strings because strings are Im important in the AP exam because there will be some things that you have to know for strings. So we're going to go over this first before we go into iterations and um, loops. So, so without further ado, Adam's with me. So we're gonna go through each one. So here we go. Uh, we're gonna open a new project. I'm gonna start a new project for this one. This is gonna be lesson 10 notes, uh, which I already did. So we're gonna create a class. This class is going to be test or lesson four, whatever the case may be. So got that so far. All right, we're going to take this out. We're going to start our op. That next new okay, so we're gonna have our public and we're gonna do our public static void. And remember what void is void means that we either need or don't need a um, return. So, Adam, what was the vo remind me what void does? So void creates a method where you do not need to print anything out and there's no return statement at the end mm -hmm. that would be needed as with a string out with a string method or with an int or a double method. So yeah, we're going to do this again. Don't forget um, again. Do not worry about what we're writing up here yet. We will talk about building a class soon. We'll get to that part. But right now, this is what you're going to need so we will have a string. Uh, we will have everything in this method right here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about our primitive type. Our primitive type we know is int double boolean char and so forth. But if you take a look, if we write string, string is not highlighted in red. String is not highlighted in red. Why is string not highlighted in red? Because it's not a primitive type. All of these right here are primitive types. And with the primitive types, the rec Java recognizes that these are going to be reserved words, whereas string is technically a reserved word, but it's not a primitive type. So it's not going to be bolded. So it is its own thing. A string is an object. Um, so you're creating objects with with a string rather than creating a um, instance variable here. So that way, uh, we're not going to do this. If we do this, x equals seven, we're going to have something here. But string is going to be um, can be written this way, but there are other things that the string can do that in double boolean and char can't. So we're going to get rid of these for now. And we're going to say the string is, um, we're going to create it, we have to create an object with string. So string, um, same thing, we got to create the variable. And Adam, why don't you give me a word for right now? Happy. Happy. That's perfect. And as you can see, we're creating the string, uh, a string variable str. And we're assigning happy into that. So it's going to be, the word happy is going to be in there. Now this is a shortcut way. This is a shortcut to how a string is done. A string is actually written in this way. You take the object of string, you have, you have the class string, technically string, it can be a class, and you take the object, which is str, and you're gonna create a new string called happy. This is the official way of writing a string. This is the official way of that. A semicolon, of course. 
Um, so this is the official way. This is the shortcut way. A lot of people use it as a shortcut way. Did I do something wrong? Right. Oh, it's because there's a variable. There's a variable called string r defined. That's why there's a there's an error here. So we're okay with that for now. But this is the official way of writing a string. You want to create an object called string, and you want to make it a new string called happy. So str has uh, signed happy to it. Happy is assigned to str. So this is the shortcut way. We can do it this way. So we'll go through that as well. So let's go through the official way. Let's cut this one out for now. And then we go system system dot out dot print ln and then we can type in sdr if we compile this on our test it should come out to be that so it's the same thing like an instance variable where you assign x when you assign 7 to x and you put x in here it will assign it so instead of writing out the word happy which gives us the same which gives us the same thing. It's creating a string. It's creating a string called happy in here because of the quotes. Um, you can create a string outside and then print out that object have right now. Uh, there is something else um, we can do. We can concate it. Adam, what is concating? Well, concave would just be to shorten something or make it longer whenever you want to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna do the shortcut way really quick, and we're gonna do uh, something. Let's say right now, actually, we have happy, and then we're gonna create something like this. So instead of going, I am happy, just like that. Uh, we can concade this to different things. Concading means that if I just do, if I hit the plus sign and then create each one of these as its own string, we should be able to print that whole thing goes, I am happy. It should be the same way. Now, that's what concading means. So when you have the, when you have a string, written down and you go plus a variable that is concadence concading means that you're just adding an extra thing onto the system dot out so let's go with this we have string two or this is technically string three we're going to do string one str one and we're going to create that as i or i and then we're going to have string str2 let me if i can spell string correctly m okay and then if we change these to str1 plus str2 plus str3 we're going to compile this nothing wrong you can't have that have that Okay. Can't spell again. Here's, and we create that I am happy. As you can see, there's no spaces because I didn't create a space on them. You have to be careful with that. So when we go through that, the word concadence, you guys should be able. Station. Um, you should know that the cadence is going to be the plus sign. Okay. So um, we're going to talk about indexing. Indexing, we should know most of these because everyone here should be in at least up to what math, Adam? Well, in this class, you should at least have done algebra 2, most likely, or be in algebra 2 or higher. Be in algebra 2 or higher, or technically, you should be at least somewhere concurrently in MA in some way because we're going to talk about indexing. Now, what is indexing per se? Adam? So indexing is a way to just find positioning within strings. Mm -hmm. So if we have something something AP computer science, 
we have AP Computer Science. There is an index to AP Computer Science. Each individual each individual letter is indexed in a specific way because the computer has to recognize where AP space C O M P U T R space um, S C I N I E N C E. They all have to be placed in the computer somewhere. In this case, our indexing has to start at zero. So we know that the place value of A is zero, place value of P is zero, the space is two, three is C, four is O, five is M, P is six, and so forth and so forth. And the index keeps going until you run out of letters. So those are indexing, and we'll go over why we need to know indexing a little later. Is there anything else we need to know about indexing? Um, just the biggest thing, make sure you always know the index of the first letter or first character within a string is always going to start at zero. Exactly. So make sure that it starts at zero. The length, the length of the string is the exact number that you're supposed to write. But because your index always starts at zero, it's going to be one letter high, one number higher. So that's what index is going to be. So we're going to actually come up with three, five methods here. We're going to do five methods. Okay. We're going to talk about the length method. Okay. Then we're going to talk about the char at method. And then after that, we will take care of the index method, which we will talk, which we talked about. So we will figure that one out. Substring. substring method and then equals method okay so let's go see this for the first one the length method the length method is what we're going to do is we are going to take our object okay and then we have string so we're going to talk we're going to take string we're going to shorthand it dot object and then we're going to set that equal to hamburger. Okay. In this case, we're going to count what the length of the object is. And that's what it is. The length of the object um, in hamburger cannot find some object. Oh, we don't need that. That'll be our next one. We're creating the object. We're creating the object obj so now we are going to take obj dot length and this is what's going to create our length it's going to add up all the indexes and then spit it out as an actual number and so we're going to do system dot out dot print ln and we're going to say object.length and then we're going to compile dot uh, out print compile and it should give us nine you can see it gives us the letter it gives us the number nine because there are nine letters in the word hamburger okay any questions on that oh, there should be any questions on that fairly straightforward from that so now we're going to do the next one we're going to do character at adam what do you think character at is going to going to do for us so character at it's going to be using the index of all of the letters or characters that are inside the string but instead of you putting in the word or letter that you want and it's spitting out a number, you're going to put in a number and it will spit out a character that's at that index in the string. Okay. So we need an actual, what are parameters? As you can see, it says there is no, cannot apply because there's no argument. We need an argument in here. It's going to be an, it's going to be an int value. We're going to do that. So we're going to pull out one. Okay. 
we're gonna do one we're gonna index one we're gonna character at one so in this case when we do this do character at and then we go one what can we say that this one's going to be adam well we can see that it's not going to print out the first number or the first the first index of the string because that would be zero mm -hmm. so it's going to print out the second object that it sees exactly so if, when we run this as you can see it's gonna print a because it's indexing a and when you index a as you can see the index of apple of h with adam said was zero one is a so that means it's gonna print out a okay so that way that's what indexing is gonna be and char at char at is gonna be a specific letter to take a specific letter from the index and it's going to print it out in this case because we're assigning we're asking the computer to print out character at fairly straightforward nothing too crazy about these methods right here um object dot char, that character at um object dot length the next one we're going to do after that is indexing index so in, we want to explain what index is for this one so index is we talked before how when you have indexing it gets you a certain position of a word but with index of you will be able to get pieces of words starting from the first either you can put in a string and it will tell you the first place you want it to be or you can put in a chart and it will put you and it will give you back numbers depending on which version you would like to use okay so in this case, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna take what it is here, and it's gonna ask you for an, um, an argument. And in this case, let's say we want the index of A. It's going to go backwards. So character at and indexing are technically backwards in this case. So, so. index of that. So if you don't know what those are, if you scroll down, there should be a list of all the indexing of right here. So you have length, uh, character at, index of, and then indexed characters are. So there's a bunch of methods that we do, but we're going to talk about these couple of methods first. So if we do index of, and we do the character a, we're going to this. And it's going to give us index of one. So it tells us which index it is because it is on the first index. Now, um, Adam, what happens if I do school? So if you do school, no value should appear because that is not actually found anywhere within the word. Right. So let's just look what that does. And it says negative one. So there is. So when it has a negative one, it's not looked. It can't find the index of it. But what happens if I do zero? Um, what happens if I do the O? Oh, what happens then? Will it take, which index will it take? That's the question at N. Well, if you put an O for a hamburger, it should still show up with a negative one because it is not in there. Right, but now that we have school, so we changed our word to school. Now, which index do you think it will go to? It will always go to the first index, or at exactly. least it should. So just remember, if you want to comment on that, when you do index of, it will go until it finds the first. And also, if you want to be sure about it, you can do the index of with the string, and then you can put double O's, and it will put the first position right. of the first O. So then if we uh, compile this, as you can see, it says index three, so zero, one, two, three. So it stops at the first O it sees and index it and index it for us and then prints that out. So you can see the indexing is a little peculiar on that and everything like that. So just make sure that you guys are understanding how the index works. Substring is a little different. Substring is almost like indexing, but there's a slight change to sub um, to substring. 
Uh, Adam, what's the what's the difference between index and substring here? So index will get you a part of a string, and it can either be a word, it can be just one character, but substring will give you, you can choose how many letters or characters you want it to be inputted. And then also it can start from the beginning, middle, or end of a word. So it varies on what the output will be if you put in the same exact parameters. Exactly. So in this case, it's gonna give you we're gonna we're gonna in we're gonna do two arguments here on in, on substring. Substring has a um, has a way it's gonna take the range of the entire string. So we're gonna go substring here, we're gonna do object. We're gonna change the object to high school. Okay, we have a longer string here. We're gonna take high school and then we're now going to do substring. And we're gonna take out the characters because it's not a character anywhere. Over here, substring, got the characters. And then here we're gonna take two arguments. You can see if we have it, it's the argument doesn't apply. So we're gonna take two arguments. In this case, let's let's try and take only high from high school. So we're saying we're thinking it's going to be zero, one, two, um, zero, one, two, three. So we're gonna go from zero, comma, three. Let's see what this comes out to be. As you can see, when we print it, we get H. I G. We're missing the H on this. Now, why do you think that is? Where where did this go wrong? Oh, the thing that might have gone wrong with this is I might not remember this correctly, but it might go to one before mm -hmm. and it actually finishes it. Right. And we call that inclusive and exclusive. So we're gonna make a comment over here. Uh first parenthesis. First parenthesis is inclusive, which means it includes the actual number. It is equal to, it is greater than or equal to zero. But then the second parenthesis, the second parenthesis is exclusive. Exclusive means that it does not include three. This is less than three, but not equal to three. So that means it is not going to is not going to include the third string or technically the fourth index of this. So, that so means, go ahead. you might be wondering why this would be useful that it goes to one before and doesn't go to the final position. Later on, you'll learn how to use um, different variables as parameters. So let's say you were to put length as the end index. Because length is one higher than all of the indexes, it will only go um, to the length minus one, which will work for finding the substring. Right. So you just got to understand that there is a there is a reason to this madness, because when we count, we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nine, 10. So our string is technically 10, is technically 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So our string is 11, but it goes from 0 to 10. So you have to understand that there is a logic to why the first one is ex the first one's inclusive and the last one's exclusive because the numbers, the length of the string is not the same as how, what you're indexing as the string. And so then we are going to talk about a very simple thing about substring. Substring has a very particular, um, very particular reason why uh, we talk about this. And there is a shortcut to strings. Okay, there's a very shortcut thing about strings. Strings can also be substrings can also be only one number. Now we call that a specific thing in this case. The word we're looking for is called overloaded. Okay, overloaded. The reason why is that is that sometimes 
because the coder realizes that this is something that is useful, it's going to create something like this. It's going to create its own thing where substring has specific shortcuts. And you kind of learn that through coding. And when you code more, you'll start learning that there are things, there are overload, that different methods have different ways of overloading. Um, in this case, if we want to just do um, school all the way to the end you don't have to do zero one two three four um five to eleven or five to twelve so that's the reason instead of going from five to eleven which will get rid of the l here um it, we can make it overloaded we can overload the system we can overload the substring and it will create the same thing so we have school here so all of us just worked on the rectangle lab and a lot of people were confused why you would need two different versions of rectangle mm -hmm. um, for the method you needed one with no parameters and one way you needed to get the x y values and also the height and width okay. this is the exact same concept mm -hmm. you can have multiple versions of the same method um, of anything that you're calling, you just need to make sure there's different parameters so you can call it in different uses and it will be helpful to you in different ways. Right. So I just created five and because it's an overloaded statement, it's just going to go to five till the end. So it should get me up to school. So I'm going to compile. As you can see, it takes me, it does the same thing. I could have done three to school. And if I compile this, this should get me from H all the way on. Well, as you can see, it goes from H to school. So this is an overloaded statement. There are different things that we can also say about overloaded. There's another one that we did. I know a student asked me um, this as well earlier. Um, in this, if we do, if you have a constructor, you can have a constructor without parameters. And then you can have the same constructor. You can have the same constructor, but with a parameter. And that's called overloading as that's called overloaded as well. You can overload the system by adding an instance variable into the constructor, or you can leave the constructor blank and just have everything in have something in here. And these are the little tricks and nuances that you will learn as we get further, as you keep practicing into the thing. So this is considered overloaded. Overloaded. This is an overloaded constructor here with the extra variable when you have an er variable inputted. So you have two constructor classes. You have two constructor classes, one with variables in it, and then the other one where you have an input variable. Well. Now, what if I wanted to have more than two? Is that possible? Uh, believe it is right yes you can have as many as you need just as long as you have different parameters for exactly each. as long as you have different parameters on it there won't be an error there is an error now because i didn't write it completely so it says it's an illegal start to a statement but we're just going for an example of what what we can do and can't do in java and you'll get you'll you'll start understanding that as well as we get further as you guys get further into practicing so now the last one we're going to do is the equals. The equals one is going to be a little bit more difficult. Ooh, there's an extra bracket. That's probably why. Um, so the last one we're going to do is equals. Equals is basically a comparison. We haven't done this yet, so this one might be unfamiliar with you guys in some way. So we're going to talk about if statements. We'll get to if statements later. So right now, just follow along. You might not, you won't need this until, until we get to, until we get to uh, if statements and everything like that. But we're just going to talk about the if statement. It's pretty straightforward. Nothing too crazy on this and everything like that. Not a statement. do that yeah let's just do system dot out all right 
so we can system dot out. So it's basically saying that if it, if if you assign seven to x in here the double equal sign which you, you should know your operations by now double equal sign means that if x is equal equal to seven so if seven and zero are the same thing it will uh, it will print true so it's very self-explanatory what an if statement is if something is correct then do something inside the parentheses as you can see um it will print nothing because of the fact that it's not true seven is not equal to Seven is not equal to zero, so it's not true. So it will go through that. Tra characters are going to be the same way. We are going to do the exact same thing with with equals. We're going to create our object. I'm going to delete this first. We're going to create our object. So the string object, and it's going to be equal to class. And then we have string. Gotta make sure string is capitalized or it's not gonna work. And we have string object two. And we're gonna treat that as a room. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing. If equals dot object equals object two. Okay. Something wrong there, Adam? Um, I cannot see a screen, so. Oh, you can't see my screen. That would help. Is that better? Yes. Uh, it should be. You have system dot out, and it needs to be out. Oh, okay. And then also it would be obj dot equals. And OBJ. then oh, did I do it the other way? Yeah, you just need flip equals in obj. And there also needs to be a final closing parenthesis. Yes. Second thing. And then it's the other way. Opposite. We always want the object first. There you go. And spell print right as you can see you know we always have to troubleshoot with a second person it usually helps so in this case we're going to check if class is a, is equal to room and in this case it won't be so you will have a blank screen again so it's checking if object if the object class if the uh, string class is equal to the string room now if i write this as class if I write this as class it should be equal because the um the string object of class should be the same as the um the string of object two which is class again run this and as you can see we get true over here okay so again we are not gonna go through this until we're gonna like kinda not get through here until we get to if statements but i wanted to give you these five methods the length the length um method the char at method the index of method make sure we write that the substring method and then the equals method these are the methods that we will more than likely use a lot in here creating substrings um creating ranges of the substrings and then rotating them and so forth we will go through that hopefully next time Make sure you read through these to get all the strings, all the string methods that are available to you. And everything like that. Adam, do we have anything else that we needed to cover? Um, no, I think just look through the lesson. Mm -hmm. um, make sure to ask questions if you have any. Right. Okay, so go through this. Um, go through the video again. Um, try and see what you guys um, can do. Um, the classes, I will pull out the lab to make sure that the lab is okay and there's no if statements on it. Me and Adam will double check to make sure uh, upper and lower cases go through that, what that is.
what a trim is as well and what a null is we'll try and go over that as well later on but these are the five um, classes that we're well, well sorry these are the five methods on strings that we're going to cover on the AP exam and everything like that so um, on college board it'll tell you like things to study for we'll go through what the thing uh, things to study for as well with strings and everything but this will help you with code HS because there's a lot of strings on there after 2.6 so we will finish off code HS so that way we can get to iterations next week as well all right great and, Go ahead. yeah just these methods they are already pre-made methods so you don't need to create them as you go you can just call them yeah exactly okay and when we did the other ones when we did um the double like string and then the equals you could just put them on the c out you don't have to write them twice i wrote them twice just to give you an understanding of how it works but you did not need to write um, the other things as well. Let me see if I can get there before we end. Uh, I don't know if I'll get there, but yeah, we need to get rid of that. No, we don't need that. That one. So you don't need to write object dot substring three if you already done object dot substring three in the print in the print ln we're just doing this just so you see what the method is and then where to put the where you can put the method and everything like that okay all right great guys have a good one we will see you next time for more ap comp lessons see you later bye